Hey everybody, welcome. This is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. Thanks for joining this live stream. If you um, are a regular live stream viewer, so I'm gonna let you know this Friday there will not be a live stream. And this is it for this week. So um, yeah, so thanks for coming. I'm glad um, you guys um, saw, I posted this a couple days ago to give you guys advance notice in case you, you know, or, or, or have your schedule set for Friday so you adjust it for Wednesdays. And some of you are just probably curious to see what this discussion is going to be. So online right now, I'll bring them on board in a second. I have Kevin Bass. You probably saw the video I made around a month ago. And um, just a quick background, you know, I, I told you like during the during the beginning of like the COVID lockdown last year, I kind of like started getting more interested in Twitter again. I was an early user from like, you know, like 12 years ago and kind of gave up on it and just didn't see any value in it. But I found value in it last year and I started following amongst other people's a, a nutrition Twitter scene that some of my favorite vegan medical doctors are on. And I saw um, some posts get retweeted or recirculated from this Kevin Bass person who I'd never heard of before. And um, I made a video because I saw posts um, from him who, uh, posts where I was kind of like, what are you saying about veganism here? Because this to me sounds completely wrong or at least a, an imperfect understanding of what veganism is. Um, so after um, my, making my video, he said, yeah, he'd be willing to come on, happy to come on and um, um, elaborate on his point of view, which I thought had an anti-vegan kind of um, a flair to it. And so he can try to explain that. We'll see if, if you know, what, that, what, what his position really is, see if I misunderstood it or something like that. So without any um, further ado, let me bring Kevin on. I'm sure he could give you a, a better background about what he does. Um, he has, a, yeah, he could, I, uh, one thing I wanna say, I wanna give him kudos before I bring him on. Um, one thing he does do online on Twitter is he, he tries his best to um, um, separate out the misinformation about like nutrition, um, health um, from, from you know, the, the true information, the evidence-based information from the, the, just the ton of misinformation out there. But I thought veganism was kind of getting thrown out with all that too. So more reason to talk about this because I appreciate that because you guys know that's kind of been my specialty here for the past, past like five years is, um, is um, calling out um, just anti-vegan misinformation and correcting it with the actual facts of the matter. So without any further ado, let's get Kevin on here. All right, here we go. There you are. Hey, Kevin. How's it going, Ryan? Cool. Thanks for um, taking up my offer to talk about this because, yeah, you've made some posts that I'm not the only vegan who thought like, whoa, what is he saying here about vegans? This is like, you know, like a lot of people like what you have to say. But when you say stuff about vegans, it's like, hmm, they're kind of like not sure what's up with that. So we can talk about, you know, we'll, 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 t we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, first, why don't you give people like a quick background of what you're about, what you're doing? Uh, yeah, so. First, I want to say thank you for having me on. This is a, um, you're a big vegan YouTuber. I'm not sure, uh, and this is like our first time talking. So, uh, so far it's been good, but it's, uh, this is, this is, uh, this is interesting. But uh, my background is I'm a, I'm a medical student, uh, an MD, PhD student in particular, so basically that's uh, a dual degree program where you train both to be, are we good? Hang on, I'm seeing if I get a little echo here. Hmm. I don't. Oh, okay, maybe just maybe I'm hearing it. Are you going through like speakers on your computer or something like that? I'm sure, I don't have anything open. Any of the YouTube uh, that is that you talked to earlier, talked oh, to I... about earlier, open. Let's make sure that every. You know, I'm just gonna close down. Yeah, I had some I had some headphones here that could have been doing it. So maybe that was it. I think you're cool. I think it was me. Are you are you good? Is it is it is everything okay? Yeah, I think we're good now. So sorry about that. I didn't hear that when we were testing out earlier. So continue on, Kevin. My bad for looking all confused there during your introduction. No problem. Uh, <laughs> um Oh, that's funny. The, uh, the there's some delay on the Okay. All right. So yeah, so it's a it's a dual degree program. We learn how to be a scientist and a, a, a clinician. Uh, I started out as a, you know a, a basic MD only medical student, but I uh, realized very quickly that um, going in more detail and having a deep understanding of things is is where really where I'm at as a as a human. It's my sort of my character. So uh, 
uh, after the second year of medical school, I started the PhD. And that's how the MD PhD programs work. And I'm almost done with the PhD and I'm about to start. My medical studies again, uh, I got interested in nutrition. I've been interested in for a really long time, ever since you know my early 20s when I was interested in fitness, working out, bro, a lot of bro science, but some good stuff as well. Uh, and then over the like last, I think seven years is whenever I've made that like sort of my all consuming hobby outside of uh, medicine and uh, you know, we're in, I'm in kind of a cell and molecular biology lab. But uh, yeah, so, and then in that time, I've sort of gone through the gamut of all different sort of nutritional beliefs and, you know, read everybody from all different points of view because I was interested in what the truth was. And at the end of it all, my basic conclusion is that, as you said, like misinformation is rife. It's everywhere. It's in all camps. Uh, and I think often, I think not even often, I'll say with, with very few exceptions or with almost no exception, the most famous people in the different nutrition camps tend to be the ones who spread not necessarily always the most misinformation, but often um, they spread quite a bit of misinformation. And it's often the case that people are more evidence-based and maybe might be thought of as maybe a little bit more boring, uh, often are not as popular, not as famous. So what we're hearing in these different nutrition camps often is from the loudest and uh, sometimes occasionally some of the most dubious people in those respective camps. And that's the thing that uh, consumes me. There's deeper personal reasons. We could talk about that later on or, okay. uh, you know, but but that's well, what consumes me and that's what that's what interests me. And that's the context of this. Okay, well, we'll see how much we can discuss. I like to keep it around an hour or so. Yeah. I could talk about stuff like this all day, but let's try to keep this discussion to an hour. So let's, let's start off with something that you and I were, um, seem to be having a disagreement about um, maybe if we had this uh, live debate that we're doing right now if we had done it a couple weeks ago what we would have talked about might be a little different than today it seemed like you may have I may have what I've said to you on Twitter which you guys need you guys need to follow me on Twitter you know, I, I'm at Ryan Lum I'll tell you it's you know it's just something I have just you know kind of gotten back into it's just like you know an informal thing for me and happy health of vegan i'm representing it as myself but anyway on, on twitter let me get to um to twitter really quick here um what am i missing here okay um the discussion about is veganism a a um sub something separate from from a plant-based diet i have your your um a tweet here from just uh, a few days ago, August 4th, it said the distinction between plant-based diets and veganism is dishonest. And I mean, we had a pretty long discussion about, like you're saying they're pretty much the identical. And I'm saying, no, they're, they're, they're quite different. So what's your, what do you feel right now today, Wednesday, August 11th, about the distinction between veganism and plant-based? Do you still hold to this strong position that there should be no distinction between the two? Uh, I don't think there should be. Hmm, that's an interesting thing. Because uh, uh, as vegans, when we hear this, it just it's just it just irks us because we know there's a, a world of difference between plant based I, 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 and yeah. vegan. I hear you. So the idea is that uh, vegan, as far as I understand it, your point of view is that veganism is is a kind of a worldview and, and an orientation toward our uh, non human. Um, why, uh, um, animal brothers and sisters, so to speak. And uh, it's about trying to make sure that their rights and their um, are respected and they aren't uh, subject to undue suffering, right? Yeah, That's it's just basically, if sum it up in a nutshell, it's a moral stance against exploiting animals, against cruelty to animals. It's being morally opposed to that action, that, that those actions and that practice. Yeah, so what, what I think is that um, a, and I, and I keep trying to work on the precise formulation of this, over the course of the last month, we've gotten a, a substantial ways, but I'm still trying to fully articulate this, but I think that, that some of the distinction between veganism and plant-based, some of the people who, who say that they are plant-based are actually motivated by vegan ethics. And so whenever they say, no, it's a health uh, orientation, having no animal products is something that you should do for optimal health. Uh, 
I think some of that is motivated by um, some sort of ideological orientation that wrote that may have as some of its uh, its essence or or some of its origin a a, a, a concern for uh, vegan ethics as opposed to strictly science, and that's 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 the where I'm coming from. I'm concerned with the corruption of science by non-scientific uh, considerations. So. Okay, so do you so make sure I understand you, um, Kevin? So you agree that there is a an essential distinction, an essential distinction between veganism and and plant based. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yes. But the reason that I said that there's some dishonesty there is because I think some of that plant based category is growing, not for reasons of science, but because vegan advocates are sort of speaking by using science to convince non vegans to stop eating animal products. And so that's what I meant by the distinction is dishonest. But I do agree that there are some people who definitely are not vegans, but who don't eat any animal products for sure. And those are those are quote unquote plant based. On the other hand, uh, there's well, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to like just continue on a thought here because yeah, vegan in inherently not to get too much into grammar is a, it's a noun. It's a thing. You're, you're you are you are vegan. I am vegan. When you use vegan as an adjective like vegan diet, that's now that's fine, but that's not describing a vegan. Because I, I understand why you might have thought that at first. Because like say in like you know, like when you see science, when you see studies testing you know a difference between you know a control group of, of non-vegans and then they give others a vegan diet a vegan diet you know it's it's an adjective vegan is the adjective to to diet the thing is when you give uh, subjects in a study a vegan diet they all of a sudden don't become moral ethical vegans they're just doing what the researchers are feeding them so i just want to make sure there is such a thing as a vegan diet that someone can eat doesn't mean they're vegan for all we know these test subjects are still hunting on the weekends and wearing leather and fur without even thinking about it or anything like that so i want to just emphasize yes you can eat a diet that's completely free of animal products and still in, in no way be a vegan yeah, this, but, that's it's entirely it happens all the time but i don't but, but i just want to make sure that there is that distinction there you know between people who are being like you know eating all plants it looks like a vegan diet but they are not vegans for for whatever reasons um so 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 you wouldn't what would you what what noun would you use for those people um well i'm just saying if um i'm just looking at it from a scientific standpoint you have to operationally define your diet so we're calling it you know they call it a vegan diet and they define it as one that's void of all animal products um yes. i don't know if i have a noun for them i mean the best one i could would say is that they're eating they're eating you could say i don't know if there is a noun. you could say these are true facts you can say a they are eating a vegan diet. Doesn't mean they're vegan, but they're eating a, a vegan diet, forced a vegan diet. Secondly, you could also say they're eating a plant-based diet. So they're, yeah, so so you could call them a plant-based dieter, right? Like something like that. It's just- Because plant-based doesn't mean yeah. that they, it means, well, it, doesn't have the implication, the essential component of having the moral convictions of a vegan, being opposed yeah. to cruelty to animals. Right, I mean, but then, Okay, but if, but but the problem with the plant-based diet is there's different kinds of plant-based diets, right? There's a vegetarian diet if we want to. There's a vegan diet. There's like a lacto-ovo vegetarian diet. Like many people consider those all among the in the plant-based umbrella, well, according to some of the literature that I went through. Even I think yeah, in the, you're, that, you're that speaking truth. Through. Yeah, so, plant-based is very broad, and vegan a vegan diet narrows that down to a specific kind of plant-based diet because on a plant-based diet it doesn't necessarily mean you're eating only plants if you look up like a definition of it you can see it defined as the minimization of plants and that is not a part of a vegan diet whatsoever yeah and you could be vegetarian and cons it could be considered on a plant-based diet so that, that's one reason why i don't really like the term all that much especially when referring to vegans because we're yeah technically it's a plant-based diet it's not a false thing to say but it's leaving out the essential component yeah there's no animal products and we do that for a certain reason what well, but if you don't call people who are eating a vegan diet if you don't use the word vegan or you don't call them vegans right if you call them say a plant-based diet or, or something like that then um then you're not actually being sp entirely specific so like one of the alternative terms that i was using in some of my discussion was used like 
plant exclusive. But then whenever I'm like, okay, these plant exclusive dieters, nobody then knows what the hell I'm talking about on no. Twitter. You could that's say they're eating a, you can say these subjects, these people are eating a vegan diet and that's a hundred percent true fact. And then so there's no ambiguity. There's no ambiguity between lacto and vegetarian and or those who have minimal meat. It's very yeah, specific. But, but, yeah, yeah. But what about the zealots on Twitter or on any social media platform who are hardcore, like you have to eat a vegan diet for optimal health kind of thing? Uh, what would you call them? They're, that's definitely an important part of their identity. Who right? says that? Are you talking about like raw fruitarians or something like that? Because that's usually the only people I hear saying that stuff. And I'll ask them, please show me, show me the study that says you have to do any of these things to have. I don't even know what optimal health means. And to me, that sounds like some kind of fantasy, some yes. kind of state, some ideal that doesn't really exist. All I know is a vegan diet can be extremely healthy if you do it in a healthy way. But you don't have to. You can just be a junk food vegan. And, and I'm not going to criticize these people that just eat like you know potato chips and french fries all day what would you call yeah what would you call uh michael gregor he's definitely a, a very a very strong enthusiast he dedicates his life to uh, promoting plant-based diets he explicitly says he's not a vegan although his original reason for becoming a plant-based dieter had did have to do with animal like animals in, in 1994 i saw that yeah, yeah. on wikipedia but, but, as well but today, but today he says he's not so he's apparently not a vegan today or that's not his orientation today it's all about the science today what would you call him well i happened uh, someone gave me his book how not to diet here to read and um yeah he doesn't ever refer to himself as a vegan he never says that hey you got to be a vegan to do this stuff he's talking about here. In fact, he's recommending a plant-based diet. And in here where he describes plant-based diet, he describes it as minimizing meat. So he's never advocating for a vegan diet. So what do I call him? Uh, uh, someone who, uh, who um, is advocating that people minimize their meat, to me, kind of... Um, it's hard to describe them as a vegan. Here's the thing about Gregor. He's an interesting he case does, because he does, I here, don't here, think he eats I don't think he eats any meat and he thinks people should should if they can. He thinks people should eliminate meat. And in fact, if you I can even I have a tab open right now I can read from on his website. So, minimizing meat, yes, to the degree he actually wants people to eliminate meat and I believe he himself eliminates meat for health reasons. So, Great, but I'm not sure why. Um, here's the thing about Dr. Gregor. So he's kind of interesting because I know other um, vegan medical doctors who say, yes, I am vegan. It's it's a known fact. And I was telling you, well, because, you know, the, the, uh, yeah, I've been doing this, you know, for like, like yeah, I've been a vegan for 10, 10 and a half years, YouTube for like eight years. I should know if Dr. Gregor is vegan. I had to go on ask our followers on all our social media. Do you guys know if Dr. Gregor's ever made a clear, concise statement, at least in recent times, that yes, I am vegan. Just the fact I even have to ask that, I'm just saying he's not if you're saying like people who speak for the vegan movement he wouldn't be someone I would immediately come comes to my mind just for the fact that I don't even I don't even know if he's vegan you know other people I know for a fact are vegans you know but other medical doctors so I'm not sure why doc why why um, Dr. Greger is so important to your thesis. And, and secondly, I'm not here to defend Dr. Greger, and and I'm here to defend um, you know kind of the anti-vegan stuff you've been saying on, on, on Twitter, but I'm just kind of curious though. I know you have a, a beef, so to speak, against Dr. Greger. Uh, I don't know all the specifics as to why, but I know in general, he's not um, promoting stuff that I consider to be pseudoscience. I'm sure you'll correct me saying like, you know, don't eat a, you know, um, don't e e eat a bunch of meat, eat a bunch of plants that helps um, prevent um, some of the leading causes of death, um, get regular exercise. I'm just kind of curious. I'm really, I'm, I'm not being a, a jerk here. I'm just kind of curious if you could just tell me kind of quickly. I know you could probably go on forever. How, what, what, what's, what's, what's crazy about Dr. Gregor? I'm just kind of curious because I haven't heard him say too much stuff that just, just hits red flags off of me. That said, I tell you, I, I don't really, really quote him that much in my videos anymore. The only time I can remember really quoting him in my videos in the past couple of years was on when I made my testosterone blood test results videos. I showed some of the stuff he said about testosterone and plant-based diets. But he kind of, uh, anyway, let me know what, what he says. It's so like wacky and pseudoscientific in a nutshell without going on for too long. Yeah. I, like in a nutshell, in a one sentence nutshell, he, he um, makes claims and support. He makes really strong claims that are not supported by uh, commensurately strong evidence. That would be 
Oh, and and he supports um, certain so, ways. Okay, of so and, and does he do this all the time, or just sometimes? And uh, just give me an example. Set, tell me like something specific, uh, specifically he said that was overstated and had no or weak support from the studies he was quoting. Just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I mean. Um, because yes. everything I tell you, everything I've seen him talk about as far as plant-based diets, um, you know, leading causes of death, how plant-based diets or vegan diets can help with that, to me seems pretty yeah. like like it's the same stuff that uh, the, the um, I'm sure vegan medical doctors that you have no issues with are saying. It's kind of the same c core message. Maybe there's some stuff that's tangential to that that you might disagree with. Am I right on that? Um, or is the core of his message rotten to the core is what you're saying? I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean by core message, though? The core, like I just said, I, I don't want to say it a oh. third time. Eating a plant-based diet helps reduce your risk of, of acquiring or dying from some of the most common forms of death. Um, you know, regular exercise is helpful for, you know, good health. I mean, th these are the kind of the things I remember from Dr. Greger. Um I'm, just, I'm kind of curious if is that core of his message corrupt somehow or was tell me what your position is I'm, I have no idea um, no I think I think those particular statements are and those that those particular views are correct and those are good uh, uh, now if you if you compare say a plant-based diet like a plant exclusive diet right to use the term that we were talking about earlier like what i'm doing vegan diet a whole food vegan yeah. diet but okay is what you're doing is what you're doing better than um than uh somebody who eats like uh you know um chicken a couple of times a week define better than uh you know in what regard does it maximally decrease your risk of chronic disease or, or death and and death from okay and from don't we have studies that show decreasing meat consumption reduces your, your risk of the leading causes of death yes these that is true but does it do so all the way down to having no meat do you do you hit a point at which um you know you can if you reduce meat further it doesn't really help you that much or um is going down to absolutely zero meat whatsoever uh, going to provide maximal protection against risk? Are you, okay, maybe Mr. Mar may, I could be misunderstanding here, Kevin. You're saying, okay, so you're saying there's been more studies done on, like, say, maybe vegetarian diets than vegan. So once you get all animal products out of the way, you're not sure how what the direction of like well, all cause mortality goes. Maybe it evens out, maybe it goes down further, or maybe it spikes up again or something like that. Is that what you're asking? I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, do we have strong evidence that? Have, well, okay. So there's a few things. Most of the studies that are done looking at the relationship between health outcomes and uh, and plant foods uh, are not done in, in vegans or vegetarians. They're done- But there, there are some. And uh, have you aware of the, yes. Adventist, the Adventist health studies? Yes. Okay, because here's, uh, if you're looking at the screen here of your tweet, this kind of goes to your second sentence here, where you say there, there is no strong evidence that elimination of meat prevents disease. Do you really stand by that? There is. Do you know what the word no means? You're making a categorical claim here. There exists none. It's the. Uh, there the exists no. Thing. There exists zero evidence that elimination of, of meat prevents disease. Are, are is that what you're saying, Kevin? Because this is this is the kind of stuff why I made my video yeah, about yeah. you when I see is stuff the, like is this. That the entire is that the entire um, sentence? Is there anything that comes after that or before that? Yeah, I'll read, I'll read it for people. Yeah, the distinction between plant-based diets and veganism is dishonest. Second line, there is no strong evidence that elimination of meat prevents disease, which is a statement it. in logic and propositional logic and philosophy. Yeah. This is known as a proposition. It's a truth statement. It's something that can be either true or false. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I know there's context and I know you're using this as a premise for your argument to make a conclusion, but that is a proposition we can analyze yeah. on its own. The next line says yeah, yeah, plant based yeah. diets must therefore be based on pseudoscience or veganism. Yeah. I'm not sure how that follows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. let's get back to that yeah. second sentence. Do you yeah. really believe that, Kevin? Because you wrote this yeah. here. There is yeah. no strong yeah. evidence. None. There's zero? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, what is it saying? It says elimination of meat, right? Yeah. The elimination of meat elimination, prevents like disease. You need, like you, like through elimination per se, 
you're pre preventing disease, not through reduction, not through um, through anything other way, but through actual elimination. Elimination actual of meat. That means vegetarian yeah. and vegan diets. That's what elimination of meat, meat the, the definition of vegetarian and vegan diets fit this, what you said here, elimination of meat. Would you agree with that? You're talking, this is talking about vegan and vegetarian diets. That eliminates meat. A, a vegetarian yes. still have yes. yes. dairy and eggs, yes. but yes. you said yes. elimination yes. of yes. meat. Yes. Would you yes. agree that's yes. what you're talking yes. about? Yes, yes, yes. And do you yeah, stand by the statement? Keep going, keep going. Do, I'm saying, do you stand by this statement? Yeah, there is yeah, yeah, no right. evidence. Yes, 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 let's do it. Come on. Okay. No, no, Kevin, I'm being honest with you. I'm, I'm trying to, no, I'm, I'm trying to, I, I tell you, this is going to be an honest discussion. Yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to like trap you. I'm just looking at yeah. what you said here and trying to understand because this is why I made a video about I, You're the first person on Twitter I ever made a, a video about because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to understand your position here because it's so confusing. I'm probably going to come up. I, I'm probably going to come across as dishonest to your followers, but keep going. We'll we'll, we'll hash some of this out. Yes, I I stand by that. Okay, so, so if if, if so, I'm just kind of curious what you say about like say um, for instance here um, you know Dr. Garth Davis, correct? Yeah. What do you think of him? Is he is, is he kind of a in your opinion a, a like you said Gregor's kind of a quack? Would you put Dr. Garth Davis in that category, or is he an evidence based person? So Garth Davis is like friends with all my friends. I'm I'm not friends with with him specifically, but he just well, shared what kind of do you hold him in esteem or like is a evidence based um, person everybody, or is he or is he, yeah, is he a quack? Everybody that I talk to um, says good things about him. The one thing that I have a problem with is his book Protein Holic, which is uh, I think not evidence based. Um, I and apparently some of his views about protein have softened a little bit. Um, and probably the difference between me and him might be on some of the details. But yeah, I think overall, I don't have a, the highest regard for a, a really strong statement against protein as if it's like the cause of all of our diseases. Okay, well, that's kind of irrelevant for my point. But here's his, his book, yeah, Proteinaholic. It, and it's I, important because and, you're and asking what I think about No, I'm just asking. You, no, Kevin, I'm just backing up. Yeah, you yeah. said there's no evidence that being vegan or vegetarian reduces... Um, um, risk of, of disease. And, and, and here I'm referring to page 170, which I have up here. And okay. it refers to the Adventist Health Study, um, an excellent, excellent epidemiological study that has studied thousands, I thought like tens of thousands of people for, for decades. And the beauty of the study is to look at specifically at people who consume animal protein and be able to quantify the animal protein consumed and compare that to those who do not eat animal protein over many years. And the results show clear correlations between animal protein consumption and the risk of heart disease after, for, after controlling for other factors. So are you saying this is not evidence? The, the, these, these peer reviewed studies are not evidence showing that reducing, or I'm sorry, eliminating um, animal products is, um, is effective for reducing risk for disease? Uh, so I think that reducing animal products is effective for preventing disease. Okay, you, but how about elimination? Because right here, here's something else, a follow-up. This is a okay. meta-analysis conducted on all three of the Adventist Health Studies. It's published in the Journal of Nutrients. Uh, I had the whole thing, but I just put up the abstract here, and I have the highlighted part here. And again, they looked at the diets of uh, the Venice, um, uh, the people in the Seventh-day Adventist religion. They compared people who ate meat, people who ate fish, people who are vegetarian and vegan. And here, yeah. in the highlighted area, it says vegetarian diets confer protection against cardiovascular disease. And remember, vegetarians are diets that eliminate meat completely. They confer protection against cardiovascular disease, cardiometabolic risk factors, some cancer cancers and total mortality. And um, it says compared to lacto ovo vegetarian diets, vegans, all animal products eliminated and gone, seem to offer additional protection. So all the protections that they just listed, uh, vegans get the additional protection for obesity, hypertension, type two diabetes, and cardiovascular mortality. And again, I, I'm not bringing this up to be mean or anything, Kevin. I'm just trying to find a refutation for your second sentence that I have back up here where there says, where you wrote, there is no strong evidence that eliminating meat prevents disease. And I just showed you several studies that show elimination of meat, both for vegetarians and vegans, prevents the diseases I just mentioned there. So what are your thoughts on what I just showed there, Kevin? So I would say that what you showed me was that um a vegan or vegetarian diet which reduces i'm sorry eliminates meat 
we could talk in epi speak, but we'll just be like straightforward about this. I do think that vegan and vegetarian diets reduce disease compared to their the on the typical omnivorous oh, counterparts. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Then yeah. then why'd you uh, write and stand by your statement here I have up on the screen? Yeah, yeah. I'm confused. Oh. Please help me understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What if you gave <laughs> some of those vegans, you know, chicken once or twice a week or, you know, a couple times a day or you gave them fish and you didn't change anything else. Um, I don't think that the difference between a vegan or a vegetarian diet and the omnivorous counterparts is just a little bit of meat. I think it's I think there's a there's a large difference in terms of how much meat that uh, those different dietary patterns are following. And that's that's the, the question for me personally, too. Well, Kevin, let me just interrupt you for one yeah. second. They already made yeah. that control. They had the controls of their their meat eating Seventh Day Adventists and the vegetarian Seventh Day Adventists. And again, it says vegetarian diets confer yeah. protection against cardiovascular disease, yeah. so on and so forth. So that you already yeah. have that 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 yeah, thing you're no, kind no, of no. pondering. I'm about, yeah, I'm not talking about healthy user bias. I'm not saying like, oh, yeah. Although I do think they're probably different in certain ways, but that's not the, the uh, that's not the, the uh, argument I'm making that they're sort of different in other ways besides their diet. What I'm saying is, is uh, the vegans and vegetarians, the difference between them and the uh, omnivores isn't just a little bit of meat. It's it's probably a very substantial amount of meat. No, actually, the Seventh Day Adventists, if you're familiar with them, even the meat eaters there eat don't eat that much meat compared to their their um, Californian cohorts here, because they're here in Loma Linda, California. So they're already eating a pretty healthy for um, you know non-vegan or non-vegetarians. They're already pretty eating a healthy diet that includes meat. So even within the probably some of the healthiest meat eaters you'll find studied, there already there or there already are di observed differences in risk yeah, for yeah. disease. I, I don't know what the different like what the difference in meat consumption is though. If there's a, if there's like a barely much of a difference, and if it's just the difference of a small amount of meat consumption, then then that would be a, a point in favor of the idea that elimination compared to just a small amount would prevent disease i would have to concede that i don't know what the difference is though in terms of how much total but meat i'm just saying the study showed compared to the meat eaters the vegetarians and vegans have reduced risk so that's that second sentence here kevin either needs a huge asterisk and explanation or you need to say hey I was kind of wrong there. Maybe I could have phrased it differently because the way this stands as a, a propositional statement, something that's either true or false, is obviously, to me, false. What do you have to say about that, Kevin? I'm not trying to say you're a bad person or anything like that. I'm just saying maybe you, kind of like you said about Dr. Gregory, kind of overstates positions a little bit. Maybe you did kind of the same thing here. What do you think, Kevin? You, you'd have to persuade me by looking at the Advanced Health Study that the difference between the vegans and, and the, uh, the meat eaters in terms of how much meat is being eaten by the meat eaters is not that much. And if it's not that much and you still see further reductions in risk, then I would have to reevaluate whether my statement is true. If there's a really substantial difference, then it might not necessarily be the elimination that's causing the health benefit, but just the fact that it's the meat has been substantially reduced. And if you reduce more meat from that point, then you might not necessarily. Uh, so should I send you? You can, you can evaluate this later. I'll send yeah, you the yeah, PubMed yeah, yeah. ID, and yeah, you can get, sure, you can get the whole. Yeah, yeah, but so, yeah. so you're saying though, if I'm, I understand, I'm open to learning. Yeah, if I understand I you right, Kevin, you're saying yeah. that this conclusion that I've highlighted in the abstract that they that the authors of this paper stated in the peer-reviewed article here in nutrients you're saying that this conclusion that they published here is not entirely accurate that they didn't show that eliminating meat um uh, that eliminating meat make sure i got your words here um um disease. prevents disease so you're saying yeah. they didn't this does this study does not show that is that what you're saying to me kevin elimination of meat per se meaning compared to any other level of meat prevents disease is they didn't show that elimination of, of meat compared to a, a small amount of meat consumption prevents these unless they did i don't know what the difference is between the meat eaters and the the, the vegans I don't okay know the, you know. all right so i'm not here to get into the fine details oh. of the study I'll, I'll send you this link Wrong. and you can you can check it out and and judge for yourself and in, in your mind if that was a sufficient amount of meat difference or, but, or what but, have you i don't know what a sufficient be let me just say this though i want to be wrong like i want to be wrong I mean, I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to have to like change everything in my entire lifestyle. So that would be very inconvenient. But I still, if the truth is the truth, and if you're right, then you're right, then that helps me. So then I would be very appreciative if, I was, if you were showing that my statement was wrong. But at the time that I was writing that, 
And uh, I still think that that's true until I see evidence otherwise, because I don't know of any, you know, analysis that is I shouldn't that, but I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, uh, then then yeah, then I would have to say that that statement is wrong. So okay, no. I'll just show you one thing here. I saw from Doctor Garth Davis. He was doing a um, some kind of program with a few other doctors here. Um, basically, they're showing here. I've, I've highlighted a whole food, plant based diet combined with exercise and stress management are as effective as medications, and sometimes more so in treating cardiac illness. Um, that sounds like a way to prevent disease by eliminating meat, a whole food plant-based diet. You know, you, you know, Dr. Garth's talking about a vegan diet there, eliminating meat. Do you think, um, he, do you think he's advocating here for, um, do you think, how do you think he's, he's, um, in agreement with your statement there or, or would be in disagreement because he's advocating whole food plant-based diet as effective as medications in, in preventing heart disease. And that's what your thing says here. There's no strong evidence that elimination of meat prevents disease. Yeah, it sounds like he's getting that from what? Is he getting that from uh, Ornish's study? Um, I'm, he didn't. He's he's he didn't. Like he was. This wasn't a scientific paper. I'm just saying he's of the point of view, as I am, that there is strong evidence that elimination of meat prevents disease. So you're you're you're, you're in a disagreement with that. Would you say that me and Dr. Garth are? Um, it, it, pseudoscience or something what would you say or yeah, if, you, if you say that if you say that uh, there's strong evidence that a according to my current understanding of the evidence base and as i'm as in putting it here i don't think that there's a comparison between people who uh eat a predominantly plant-based diet and then uh people who are relatively equivalent who eat uh no no meat i don't think there's any studies showing that the people who eat no meat have superior outcomes we're not uh, talking about superior outcomes. We're talking about can about eating a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet prevent disease? And you're saying we don't have evidence. So people like me and, and Dr. Davis, like in his book here, um, you're saying, for the record, because Dr. Davis might watch this. So, hey, uh, hey Garth. Um, so you're saying that me and Dr. Davis are spouting misinformation. When we say that, when we cite like studies, like I showed you, the, the this particular... Um, um, one from Nutrients Beyond Meat List, The Health Effects of Vegan Diets, Findings from the Adventist Health Cohort. So we, when we sh quote studies like this, are we spreading that misinformation that you're trying to fight online? Uh, I, I think that diets that eliminate meat, especially the ones that are um, healthy as opposed to unhealthy, because there's a, there is a distinction between those and there's a, a substantial literature on that showing that unhealthy plant-based diets actually can do harm compared to we're talking about whole food plant-based diets i've seen no studies yeah. where they put the subjects on like junk food and then like see how they're doing 10 years later i'm saying these are the you know anyway what i'm saying is no i'm just saying in general me and dr garth davis spreading misinformation when we make the claim that we see studies that show strong evidence that eliminating meats prevents disease are we spreading misinformation and if so because i know one of your things you do on twitter is you're trying to like like block accounts that put out like like misinformation like that. So would you try to like block me and Dr. Garth Davis for say, making these claims? I think that vegan diets that have eliminated meat uh, are associated in a causal manner with the, the reduction in disease risk for sure. The question is, 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 is elimination per se what is necessary? And if you eliminate compared to just having a little bit of animal products, if you eliminate completely, is there additional benefit um, uh, compared to not eliminating? That is what that statement is about. It's about well, whether- Well, that's not that's not clear. You added a lot to that. I know that you only could say so much in a tweet. I get that, I understand. But this alone, I tell you, is a, is a statement that can be on its, just on standing on its own, true or false. And to me, that seems false. And, and if it's false, that sounds like what I'm saying is a bunch of nonsense. And me and Dr. Garth are spreaders of, of wacky yeah, pseudoscience. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I only need to add two words to that. There's no strong evidence that elimination of meat per se, right? Elimination per se, elimination itself prevents disease. That is, that is the, now you can read that statement in multiple different ways. I, I didn't mean to write it in such a way that you could read it in multiple different ways, but the way that- I, I only see one way of reading that because I see it as a true statement here. It's either true, that is true or false and it seems patently there's false. Different, there's, different, there's different ways to interpret it. Is it elimination per se or is it 
elimination compared to to any other diet like it de it depends on the way that you interpret the word elimination i think i don't know we'd have to get like avion to be like yeah to like break it down for us like i Look, for me, I see multiple interpretations. I see you interpreting it one way. I, I have a different elimination per se. Do you need to eliminate versus having a little bit in order to gain a, an additional uh, prevention effect? And I so, don't know if there's any evidence that. And if there was evidence, then I'd be vegan, friends. So, well, or, you should I talk to actually. You should have a conversation with Dr. Garth Davis. But I want to know: are are, are me and him spreaders of of um, misinformation and or pseudoscience? If, if you're telling people that you have to have absolutely no animal products to to, to optimize your diet uh, from a health on a health basis, then then as far as I understand the evidence base right now, I could change like tomorrow. I read your study, but I as far as I understand the, the evidence right now. Um, it is not. It is not the case that there's any strong evidence that elimination prevents. Well, this this study I showed you didn't even say you have to eliminate all animal products. They even said vegetarian diets compared to vegetarians who ate fish and the meat eating Seventh Day Adventists got protection against um, cardiovascular disease, some cancers, all cause mortality. So you didn't even have to. According to this study, you didn't even have to eliminate all animal products. Just don't eat meat, and the, you have these advantages compared to those who don't eat meat. So so to me. It seems pretty clear, and I saw some of the comments say, "Yeah, if if, um, if I'm misinterpreting it, I think like ninety odd percent of the people might misinterpret yeah, it that me, way." Let me go. Yeah, let me turn. Let me turn Garth Davis around. Then let's talk about Garth Davis. So he okay. thinks, he thinks fish are healthy. He thinks he recommends. I believe he actually even says that people are like they're doing an okay thing if they eat fish. Fish is oh. not a problem compared to say red meat. That's my understanding of Garth Davis's views. What do I eat? What's the only meat that I eat? For example, I only eat fish. Um, so, 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 so there's that. Uh, he, he believes that. So maybe he doesn't believe that all meat is necessarily uh, 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 harmful. And that, and that, that's 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 totally fine for him for him to believe that i mean just because this study shows you know these studies show that eating a vegetarian or vegan diet gives you protections against disease doesn't mean that if a person doesn't eat that way it doesn't mean it's impossible for them to have good health that doesn't follow so i'm saying that's just like an additional no, no, no. thing that is kind it, of gets is it impo is it impossible to have the same degree of protection if you eat some uh meat and I don't think this study answers that question. That's it question. does. It does because they had the control group. Remember, these people have they yeah. share a similar lifestyle, so, so a lot of external variables are being controlled by them being from the same cohort of Seventh Day Adventists. Yeah, yeah. And it, the study clearly shows not. This is a as a is a survey of the three prior um, um, studies of the uh, of this is a meta analysis of the three prior Seventh Day Adventist studies. So and and all of these all three of these studies and this meta analysis they have the groups of meat eaters they have the groups of vegetarians and the groups of vegans and there's in all of them it shows clearly that the the, the vegetarians and vegans have better it's outcomes best, with yeah, regard to risk for outcome. this disease yes but that that but okay. what, what is the relative difference in meat intake between the, the vegans and the vegetarians and i the said yeah you, you could read that for yourself you're the researcher i'm not here to to defend and interpret subtleties in science that's not my training or job i'm just here to read what you know what is it's known important because for me i try to eat a plant predominant diet i cool. think that that's i think that that's just as good as eating a vegan diet and if i'm wrong i want to know the, the the I want to know that I don't think it's just a, a, a subtle nuance I think it's important but okay but, well uh, well, yeah. We could move on from there. I just want to know what your position was. Again, I'm, I'm not trying to blindside. I'm just trying to understand the tweets you made because, like I said, I don't really make videos about people on Twitter all that much, and your your stuff was confusing. But this, <laughs> I think, this one here, where you're talking about, um, um, um they are both trash the movements are both trash vegans and carnivores each belong to a pseudoscience pushing trash movement like how am i part of a trash movement how is dr garth davis part of a trash movement? again veganism is a is a moral stance it's a way of living which seeks to avoid as much as practical and possible all forms of cruelty to animals for food clothing or any other purpose that's what vegans are 
it's a moral stance. It's not like trash. It's either a moral position you agree with or you disagree with. I sure. believe you're not talking about that. I think you're talking about um, some of the science, but I'm showing you some of the solid science backing vegan diets and vegetarian diets. How is this trash? I, I'm sure there's worse studies people put up there, but there are studies that are pretty, you know, um, s safe with the regards to them being legitimate studies, like the seventh day, the, the health, um, the ones I just showed you there. So how, how is this a trash movement? And you compared us to carnivores. I mean, here's the thing. I don't think there's really any science supporting that if you eat only meat for the rest of your life, you're gonna have all these great outcomes. For, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, um, and you too, Kevin. I'm sure you're more familiar with the literature than I am, but I don't think there's any studies showing that. But there are studies showing if you eliminate meat and or eliminate all animal products from your diet, you will have g good health outcomes with regards to all-cause mortality, common cancers, heart disease, stroke. So how are we comparable in the same sweeping movement that you did there, calling us both trash? Well, so and you can get. I'm not get. I'm not trying to blindside you. Kid. I'm just trying to understand. This is why I made the video about you because I'm going. What is he saying here? This is crazy. So you. So you're. So you, in your universe, the main. The main thing for you is, um, the moral aspect of of the way that you eat, right? Yeah. There's that. There's absolutely unnecessary in this day and age to kill animals or or, or kill fish or any sentient being whatsoever yeah, yeah, yeah. to to not only stay alive and just kind of barely survive to be healthy to be a world-class athlete if you want to or you know a 50 something dunker like i am you know, there's no need to have animal products it's absolutely unnecessary that's the moral yeah. position of a vegan however that being said it, it can be a junk food diet if you wanted to be you might not get all these great health um, benefits that are typically associated with these studies because they're not typically me measuring people that are eating junk food vegan diets so yeah if you want to you can construct a, a smashingly healthy plant-based diet and the thing is yeah, I, I, I think i said this to you before it's yeah it's a moral stance against animal cruelty but we have to eat something so if you're truly against animal cruelty that only leaves plants so all the plants in the world are out there for you and i choose to eat lots of plants rather than lots of processed stuff because at my age 54 my body just feels way better eating more whole food plants than junk food but yeah the reason why i do it yeah, it's like selfish. I like the health benefits of it, but it really comes down to a non-selfish motivation. I went vegan because I found it absolutely unnecessary to choose a path of life where animals are dying for me three meals a day when I just eat plants. So that's it. Not to get too preachy there, Kevin, but that that's how I see veganism. It's a at its core, a moral, ethical stance, and um, it can be a really healthy diet if you want it to be, but if you want to have an unhealthy vegan diet, that's totally cool with me too. Um. So, so for me, the main distinction uh, or the main thing that's sort of my obsession is the science, the health science behind nutrition. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Whenever yeah. I say, yeah, whenever I say that, um, and, and I get in, I've gotten into this argument with Danielle as well. She tends to think a similar thing as you. Uh, but whenever I say that uh, carnivore and vegan is the same thing, right? I say Explain that, to me how they are. Again, I have yet to see a yeah, single yeah, yeah. study supporting carnivore diets. What, what I mean is, is that uh, often vegans will engage in the same kind of hyperbole and insane kinds of pseudoscience as as like as like keto carnivore type people do. And such so as I, you're saying, some be a little more specific than kind of a, yeah, a generality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, on both the carnivore or keto does, side. Does Danielle Bellardo, MD, engage in, in um, uh, pseudoscience to I'm, argue I'm for veganism? I'm talking about, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about sort of the older. The old I'm older. I'm 54. Man. I'm probably twice yeah, her age. Old, the old white man generation of like Campbell, McDougal, Gregor, Esselstein, Furman, Joel Kahn, that group of, 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 of good old boys in the uh, plant based or the uh, vegan health or whatever you want to call it world who have been pontificating about the health effects of vegan diets or, or plant-based diets. These are many of the people who I'm referring to and let's give an example. So whenever COVID hit, one of the things that was all the rage in the keto community was saying, oh, like look at this and that study. In fact, I wrote a preprint about one of the mouse studies that came out, uh, but they, they they were saying that uh, a ketogenic diet is going to prevent COVID. 
It's going to save your ass from COVID, getting better metabolic health. We don't need vaccines. Studies, right? citation needed. I saw Paul Saladino say the same thing. Eat meat, right. you won't get COVID. I've seen Rob, I saw Rob yeah. Ruterin saying the same thing. What do they all have in common? They're making these grand assertions with absolutely zero facts, right. zero and, evidence, zero studies. But and, they can't blame and, that on vegans. You and, see meat eaters doing the same yeah. thing that these wacky vegans are doing. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is like McDougal was doing the same thing. Jeff Nelson was doing the same thing. Joel Kahn was doing the same thing. Like what well, we need to, to uh, pursue his, his metabolic health. In fact, Ornish had an article. Hey, Joel Kahn doesn't speak for me. I have blocked him from all my social media years ago when he defended racism. So I have nothing to do with Joel Kahn. Wash racism. my hands clean of that guy. He is such a weird dude. Um, <laughs> he's such a... He, so Joel, he doesn't speak for me. Don't bring up Joel Kahn's <laughs> wacky positions to like argue that there's oh, wacky so vegans. He's just a wacky uh, <laughs> person. I'll get that on record. If you're watching Joel, sorry. I'm so sorry what's happened to you. <laughs> it is terrible. He's he's gone worse and worse. But I, I anyway we talk about Joel. We could have a whole discussion about Joel Kahn. Let's but, move on. But I'm saying there's just wacky but, meat no, but, eaters. But, but there's wacky important. vegans. So what? It's you important. can't it's like, it's, categorize this all as a trash yeah. movement. It is ever no, but it is everywhere. It's not just among people who are talking about COVID. As I was saying, even about uh, Gregor. Now the citation that you gave for for uh, the health advantage the. the Adventist Health Study with respect to elimination of meat. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a good study. I don't know if it showed your point. I'm going to go read the study. That's my opinion about that. But like, I'll, send, I'll send you the link too so study. you can get the but, same one. But, but if you look at Gregor's website, whenever he tries to make a similar sort of claim that it's not just a uh, reduction of meat, but actual strict elimination, he cites, he cites the freaking China study by uh, by Colin Campbell. I went in and I started reading the- He cites the, the China study for what? For, for saying that uh, there's no threshold over, there, and this is almost a verbatim quote, and, he, and, and Campbell has this in several publications, and Gregor then cites this. There's no threshold over which a further reduction of, of meat does not produce more health benefit meaning you have to go to zero to produce the maximum health benefit. And well, that's what the Adventist China Health Study said, that there's actually great benefit for vegetarians. And if you're vegan, there are additional benefits. So you don't need, I know you have problems with the China study. Again, I'm not here to defend it. I'm saying one need not quote the China study to make that, that, yeah, why that is, claim. Why is Gregor quoting the China study? Gregor has to know better than that. Like. I, so that's that's so that's why you don't like Gregor is because he quotes the China study. Is that why he himself is pseudoscience because you no, no, somehow no, no, don't like the the the, the, um, the China study? Yeah, that's one example. We could talk about like reversal of cardiovascular disease risk. We could talk about his his comments on TMAO. We could talk about his comments on IGF one. We could talk about his comments on methionine. We could talk about his comments on glyphosate. There's and artificial sweeteners. We could go across a whole range of different issues and point to systematic flaws in the way that he he interprets science and. I know Gregor pretty, pretty well in that sense, but then McDougal does a lot of the same thing. McDougal does a lot of the same thing. Uh, well, Ornish McDougal, again, I don't, he's not vegan. He says he eats turkey every Thanksgiving. So obviously he doesn't have a big problem with killing animals for food or any other purpose. So I'm but not sure again why he's speaking for us. He's highly influential in the, in the sort of the vegan health world. No, he's not. I mean, he was maybe at one point, but to be completely honest with you, I, I, I'm thinking of videos that I make. Have you heard of, say, Mike the Vegan here on YouTube? He's like way yeah. bigger than our channel. I, can, I don't remember him ever referring to Dr. McDougal. Um, I think you're putting these guys in way more esteem than they actually truly so, are mean, in reality. I'm not to say McDougal's a bad person. I'm just going, his information isn't all that relevant. You can just go to studies. You don't need Dr. McDougal to say something. We'll just go and see what the actual research says. And that's what people like me and like say Mike the Vegan or Vegan Gains do. We go to the actual research. We don't need, like a, like you said, an 80 year old dude like McDougal. No, no dissing him. He's cool and everything, but we don't need him. He's not even doing research or practice anymore. Am I right? He just does like watch, workshops. Yeah, yeah. If you watch all the Netflix documentaries, if you look look at Forks Over Knives, Game Changers, those guys figure very prominently. You don't have Is McDougal have in any of those movies? I didn't remember McDougal's in like Forks or Game Changers or anything like was he, that. Was he in, was he in uh, Forks Over Knives? Um, I saw that like a long time ago. Was. I, was he? I don't know. But anyway, I'm saying maybe it's more relevant when he was younger and well, doing more stuff. Let's, just, let's talk straight up. Game Changers, the most recent sensational Netflix uh, plant-based vegan doc, whatever you want to do, say it is, but it's, it, it promotes a, a diet with no animal products in it. And it has 
uh, it has Esselstyn in it for sure. It has a lot of Gregor in it for sure. It has those guys who are part of that establishment. So you don't like Esselstyn either? What, what's wrong with Dr. They're Esselstyn? All, it's all crap. Like, uh, what's crap? So you're saying eating a plant-based diet isn't good to prevent heart disease? Because no, that's exactly what the Adventist okay. Health Studies Look, show. It, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Look, this is this is why this is why I compared vegans to carnivores. It's why? Because there are many people who will go on a carnivore diet and lose like a huge amount of weight. Okay. Their health markers so? will get better. Their health okay. markers will get better. There are are there studies or are you talking about anecdotal stories? Because anyone can make an anecdotal story on, on YouTube or Facebook. I, I, I believe personally because we I have think, studies vegans and vegetarians have actual yeah, studies but we, have, we haven't no haven't like nobody studied like the carnivore diet like they've well, studied tough vegan. crap for them i mean they get some studies look, for them i'm just saying we look. actually have studies which makes us in a whole different camp like decades and decades of t studies of ten thousand um subjects that's prospective cohort studies that's what the uh, the venice health studies yeah, are no, tens they, of they, thousands they, subjects they, there are studies there are studies with overwhelmingly plant or um with overwhelmingly animal-based diets, and the, I think the Verta study, probably the, the large majority of calories comes from animal. And I'm not saying it's a good study. I hate, I hate the Verta study. It's very confounded. But the people in that study do see uh, their, uh, they don't have to use as much diabetes medication. Their blood sugar goes way down, et cetera, et cetera. There are certain benefits uh, to your health markers, at least of eating that way for that particular population. Does their LDL go down? Their LDL, uh, it doesn't get worse. I think it goes up, like, I think- So it's they, already high and it stays high, basically? Uh, yeah, it's not, <laughs> but, but other markers get better. And overall, as far as modern biomedical science sees those people, they're in better health than they were before they started that diet. Uh, because of the weight loss, because weight loss is, has a massive role. And in, in, that's probably a big reason why veganism is better than vegetarianism, because it's probably, it's probably harder well, to make, make sure, high Let me just stop here, Kim. Make sure I understand you. So you're saying there's one like really just not that good study that shows there's, some markers go good for people who eat a lot of meat, but they're not necessarily carnivore, carnivore diets. But the v vegan and vegetarian diets have decades and decades of science, so individual studies and meta-analysis showing that these markers get improved improved including all cause mortality and you're saying that somehow vegans and carnivores are on an equal playing field of being trash movements again this is why i'm having problems with what you say on twitter is, what i'm saying is there's health benefits there's been demonstrated health benefits in studies on carnivore diets or fine awesome i'm happy for them i hope they don't yeah. all die but that doesn't mean veganism is trash because we have tons more studies over many more years and decades and subjects that are much stronger and more powerful again i'm not sure why we're a trash movement i i, I think i think plant-based diets are awesome i think diets that are very low in uh, animal products are great I think diets that eliminate animal products might be better than diets that don't eliminate animal products. And I believe that even before I came on the podcast or the, the but, discussion. Here. Okay, but how are we <laughs> trash though? How are we a trash moving, Kevin? Because it's not about the diet that's, that's the issue. The diet is not the problem. It's the insane claims made about the diet. It's the lies told about the diet in order to get people to eat the diet because the diet is being misrepresented to people. Such that, as? Um man like we okay for example whenever gregor quotes the china study it's that's i think that's a pseudoscience it's a terrible study it's like it's a really low quality study it shouldn't be cited in defense of that and it's not good okay so because people like dr gregor who you don't like quote the china study which you don't like veganism is a trash movement because you have no, also no, no. guys that's like true. say dr yeah, garth yeah, yeah. davis who, are, who yeah. i don't doesn't quote the china study in oh, here Do, hey, yeah, dr so, daniela bellardo doesn't quote yeah. the china study so i mean it, it's funny how yeah. you're picking on on dr gregor as the representative of, of vegan science and then he's not even a vegan unlike daniel and, and dr garth davis how come you pick him as like the representative of a vegan and, and, he, and you don't like his science committee how come how come you don't put dr garth davis on that pedestal uh, of being the representative of a vegan we could we could we could talk about protein holic we could talk about uh <laughs> i could direct people to denise minger's review of 
<laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. And, and, and what is she again? What is her training in nutrition exactly? How many like uh, courses? How many? Uh, what degrees yeah. does she have in nutrition yeah, yeah. and Let's science? God, this is so convoluted. So uh, this is this is. It was she a school very, teacher? Very I mean, she has as much right to critique the proteinaholic so, or the China study as I do. She has. I actually have more scientific background and research background than she does. I'm sure. But anyway. Some of her shit, some of the stuff that she's written is, is way better than anything any of the plant-based doctors have ever written in their lives. So you think Denise Minger is speaking more truth and is, is a, 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 just Sometimes. a better science writer than like like these the, these vegan Sometimes. doctors that you don't like? Sometimes. Sometimes. Hmm. Sometimes. All right. Not not all the time. Sometimes sometimes it's it's there's she has some really crap stuff too. But uh, sometimes, yeah. And I so I'll bet you, and it's been a really long time since I read her review of Proteinaholic, but I bet you there's a great deal in that book, or sorry, in that review, that is uh, correct about why Proteinaholic is wrong. How many, and, did, she, did she provide any scientific references? Because Dr. Garth Davis here, his, his references start on page 331, oh. and they go all the way to page... Um, 377 so his he's just not making yeah. crap up i'm sure denise is making a so, lot of so crap what are you up. doing what are you what are you doing right now when you're arguing with me right you're i'm a, just you're saying a, his his his, his information is based on on peer-reviewed studies and as far as i know denise minger doesn't rely on peer-reviewed studies she just tries to make people look bad just by using what no she did she true. okay <laughs> She, 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 so, so she, basically, you're saying Denise Minger, who has no credible training in nutrition, science, or anything like that, you're saying that you're taking her word on on an even par with a guy with a medical degree, Dr. Garth Davis, and evidence. He even says, look on Twitter, Evans based fanatic. You're saying Denise Minger, you're taking her as seriously as a vegan medical doctor okay. who is an evidence based ask, one, not a yeah, woo woo one. Let's ask. Let's ask whether. Uh, you hear Garth you Davis. hearing this, Doctor Garth yeah. Davis? Are you watching that? Yeah. That Kevin yeah. thinks you, that Davis, Denise Minger and you are on Garth the same Davis. level. Yeah. Would Garth Davis stand behind that book 100? percent What would he change in that book? That's what I would want to know because I do know that even I do are, know that we are free to people, evolve our positions over time as new evidence comes about. So it just could it just speak. I'm not saying there's anything so has, actually has, wrong has, with has that book, Davis, but yeah. he can change his opinion if new information has sure, come out sure. that casts doubt. That's how sure. science works. He would be the sure. first to admit that. Sure. That book is still being sold in stores, though. Right. And I do know for a fact that Denise Minger's book, uh, it's not. She has a book, book, too, now. She has, oh, she had a book in 2013, 2014. That's not, um, she's not promoting that on her website anymore. So, so that somehow so, makes her more virtuous? I'm not sure why you have to mention that. What I'm saying is if he's changed his views and he thinks the book is wrong, then he should stop. Uh, no, okay, I want to speak for Dr. Garth Davis, but I'm sure, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Dr. Garth, correct me, Dr. Davis, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm gonna speak for him, which I hardly ever do, but I'm gonna have a liberty here. I'm taking in what you said. I'm next to certain, Dr. Garth would say this, the the overall arching message of proteinaholic is still still stands factually fine at this point in time are there some tweaks that he could improve to make the argument better maybe not cite a certain study or cite some better ones possibly so but i don't think anything has changed that radically since 20 i think 17 or 16 that 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 overturns the overarching message of proteinaholic are you saying that 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 might be the case Protein, a hol protein is harmful. That's what he, he believes protein is harmful for health. There's like Not necessarily. He's saying we have an unjustified over obsession with one of three macronutrients for, for various reasons, and it's caused more harm than good. We don't need as much protein as many people are led to believe. I know people that think they need to have protein shakes all day or else they'll die or something like that. That's all he's saying. In fact, this over obsession of the protein has led to harmful health uh, outcomes for for many people. That's all he's saying. Like obesity, d disease risk. That, that's that's the simple message of protein holiday. Yeah, How yeah, to yeah. combat that? The best way is to eat a whole food plant based diet. You're still going to get all the protein you need. You could be a world class athlete if you want to be, and and eat no animal protein and and reduce your risk for these most common forms of disease and death, which we've talked about earlier. So what is wrong with that message? 
Uh, I don't think protein is like the cause of di disease and diabetes and heart disease and all these other things. I don't think protein... Well, it's what comes along with the protein package in meat. You're getting high, you're getting dietary it, cholesterol, saturated sure. fat. Yeah, that's yeah. the is overall that message. It's, it's not protein per se. It's the whole obsession with people eating too much protein and what is what has been the consequence of that. So again, how is this a bad message? Uh, I don't know if that is the message though. Have you read it? Yes, it was a long time ago. Okay, but, it's been a while for me too, but I but, think I remember it decently I well. I believe he's got a lot more going on than that. He talks about like mTOR. I do believe he probably talks about IDF1. There's a lot of mechanistic uh, speculations in the book. There's not a whole lot of evidence that high consumption of protein, maybe even plant protein, for example, high consumption of plant protein is, is going to cause health harm. Is it protein itself or is it the, the things that come along with protein? If it's the things that come along with protein, well, I'm in the same camp. But there's such a thing as lean animal products. There's such a thing as lean meat. Is that a problem? Well, if it's protein, yeah, that's a problem. But if it's not protein, if it's a saturated fat, it's not the problem. What's the evidence that it's actually the protein itself? And there's not a whole lot. And so that's the thing. That's he never thing. said protein was toxic in itself. At least I don't remember him making that claim. Uh, I'm 99% sure that, uh, he, yes, he, he thinks protein itself is a problem because it overactivates mTOR. Like mTOR is a, it's a, it's a protein in the body that's responsible for protein synthesis. And if you overactivate it too much, then maybe you can promote cancer, you reduce longevity. If you inhibit it, then maybe you enhance longevity. That's like one of the paradigms that I think he uses, or I know he uses. So. Well, let's uh, say let's say you're right, Kevin. I'm not going to debate you yeah. on on that aspect of the science. Let's say you're right, and that Dr. Garth Davis is completely mistaken about mTOR and IGF-1. I let's say I'm just going to give you that, okay, Kevin? I'm going to grant you that, and I don't believe that. I'm just going to give you that, though, for argument's sake. I'm certain he could remove those parts out of the book if he really wanted to in this hypothetical, and still the overall thrust of proteinaholic remains unchanged. It doesn't debunk the book. Those are just aspects to an argument. You can have different ways to argue. The different different evidence to argue your conclusion but anyway I, let me just get it right for make sure doc, if case dr garth davis is watching so kevin bass you're you're saying that dr garth is dr garth's book is somehow factually wrong and should not be sold anymore because it promotes some there's misinformation in it is that what you're trying to is that the message you want dr garth to take away from this part of our discussion he should um, morally withdraw his book from public um, purchasing because no, it, it has I, harmful misinformation. I think that uh, if there are pro things that he disagrees with about his book, if he if he uh, has has softened his views on protein, if he has, do you have any evidence or reason to believe he has? Uh, it's just things that I hear, but I, it's not. I don't know directly, and these are just indirect, like things I hear from my friends and stuff. Whenever I like go on about Garth David, they're like, whatever. So I don't know what the, what the actual. So uh, what would you tell him if you were watching right now, Kevin? Speak. G <laughs> give you thirty seconds to speak to Gar Dr. Yeah, Garth yeah. Davis. It's easy. If if you're, I don't want to speak to Dr. Garth Davis on your pocket, man. Like, look. <laughs> if 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 there are things that you disagree with about that book, and you things that you disagree with about protein in particular, and you think that that's not like the driver of all the problems associated with meat, and there's a serious case to be made that it's not uh, of course there's recent studies that suggest that animal protein is harmful whereas plant protein is not and then there's methodological problems with those studies like what i think is the case about that particular book is it's overstating the case for harm from protein i think that's the basic thrust and that's one of the issues i have with garth davis in particular and i think that there's a whole industry of plant-based influencers who overstate their case using weak evidence to promote something that's good so it plant-based diets are good but that doesn't justify that doesn't justify overstating overstating the benefits or, or making fallacious arguments in order to get people to eat plant-based diets it doesn't justify 
because I've got you now. You, now. Now you're reading the comments so I can go on. No, I'm not reading the comments. I'm looking at what Dr. Garth said here. I showed you. Okay. Here's what he said. That from the, Just talking from one page of the Adventist Health Study where they compared okay. people who ate animal I protein to those. I you there on the YouTube channel. He said the results show clear correlation between animal protein consumption and the risk of heart disease after controlling for other factors. Three studies cited here. Yeah. So you're saying that Dr. Garth shouldn't is overstating the, the, the dangers of protein. See, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm trying to show Kevin is how, he has a whole book on it. He has a whole I, book on it. And I know people who seriously question those three studies who are accomplished nutritional epidemiologists and they're not carnivores. So, or or at least one or two of those studies. I don't know if- Oh, anyone could could question any study. It doesn't mean that they've debunked all three of the Adventist health studies. I'm sure people disagree with that. That's how science works. So, but so somehow you're trying to say that Dr. Garth is wrong and maybe he's spreading misinformation like I am or something. I would, I would need, I would need to see those studies. I do think he overstates the case against protein. So that's sure. your, that's your opinion. And that, again, that's why we are, um, so you still stand by this. I'm going to go back to, no, no. so, so, so it's going to be great. What we're going to so do is a, a, after this is over, I'll go through all the studies that you're talking about and I'll continue making more of a case about different doc I have a whole I actually have a whole spreadsheet filled with like different false claims from different plant-based doctors it just takes us an extraordinary amount of time to freaking put that stuff together that uh you know I didn't want to I mean I can't just list a lot it'd be boring but but over time I'll start releasing this stuff and show you these things but and then maybe I can persuade you over time but Kevin, just take the thing is I could make a database saying the same thing about you because you you've made a, a false I made statement a here of, I've said a lot of things that are wrong I, so I that's just that's human nature like here there's no strong evidence that elimination of meat prevents disease friend, you know friend so, I, I've defended that statement I, I don't think you defend you tried to defend it but I think in my mind I still don't buy your defense to be completely you honest with you Kevin all, all think, respect to you I'm not saying you're a bad person or anything I just think your defense um didn't hold much logical water and that's just my my personal opinion Other, everyone else can disagree with me if they want you okay know, let me I, ask you this did the advanced health study did it did it show that there's a big difference between somebody who doesn't eat very much meat and somebody who eats no meat in terms of their health outcomes again big difference i'm not sure how you are operationally defining the word big but here we you have know what the I'll, 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 I'll send you actually i didn't memorize the results section and the methods section but you can go over that in your own time but it sounds like right now you're just kind of questioning their their conclusion here which was published in nutrients in 2014. nutrients is not even a great journal Okay, and your opinion here. So you're saying, okay, so nutrients. If you're watching, Kevin says view. you guys aren't that good. It's an MDPI journal. It's a widely held view. Look, it's fine. New, it's a peer-reviewed, published study. All science has flaws. Yes. I'm I'm pointing out some of the potential flaws with the Advanced Health Study. It so you so if I understand your your flaw with that study is that even though they showed between the different groups I mentioned, the meat eaters, the vegetarians, and vegans, that there are a health, positive health outcomes for vegans and vegetarians, that you're still not satisfied because of the amount of meat that the meat eaters ate. Meat. Uh, you just have to read that yourself here. And let's yeah. just move on because we, we're no, going no, in circles really on that one. Because that's important because you can't overstate what that study finds. I'm not necessarily even saying it's a flaw. All I'm saying is, it doesn't answer that particular question. Potentially, we'd have to actually look at the study itself. And this is why the details are important and you just can't make these wide grandiose claims based on uh, certain kinds of evidence that don't necessarily answer the question to with a great degree, degree of rigor, which is to say strong evidence. Strong evidence means very rigorous, very difficult to knock down evidence. And, and you're assuming I, that they don't have it because you I haven't made the case for that. Well, we you should as not assume that they don't, but yeah, take a look and you can decide for yourself. My belief was that uh, there were- Just because you have a suspicion doesn't mean it's true. Man, I have to, you have to make, um, you have to be it's, skeptical. It's, I understand how science no, no, works. No, no. So you, have you, to base, you have to base your statements on what you know. At the time I was basing my statements on what I know, I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm saying I could be wrong and I'll be happy to just send me it. I'll, I'll tweet it out if I'm wrong, okay? Okay, because awesome. That's all I'm asking for, Kevin. I'm not I'm trying not, to get, say I'm you're a bad person. I'm not right. trying to paint you as like a bad guy or anything like that. I'm just trying to understand your positions. <laughs> What's that? 
I'm an awesome guy, Ryan. I believe it. All right, Kevin, one, one last tweet here. This is from a few years ago. So if this is unfair and if your positions have changed radically since then, please stop me and I'll just get rid of this one. Yeah. If this is from November 2018, I find the moral views of many vegans too extreme in their implications to be compatible with a society that truly loves life. Sorry. The motivations are laudable, but they often seem to reach existential extremes that I that I think are not compatible with happiness. Like, whoa, what's that all about, Kevin? <laughs> if you don't if you don't agree with that anymore, let me know. We don't have to um, talk about it. I'm trying. I mean, uh, how is, how how is my me being vegan not compatible with happiness? You know, I mean, that seems like a pretty extreme claim well, there. So now, now I'm gonna probably get myself in trouble or say something stupid, <laughs> and probably, you know, because I'm not, I'm a nutrition scientist, so I, I, I the the longer I've been going on in science, the less often I make like these kinds of philosophical claims because I'm not a specialist in that area. So this is just. Yeah, this is I my would, wheelhouse, philosophy here. But yeah, if you want to... No, it's not. So, <laughs> uh, let me see how the good way to, to introduce this. So, Because I was offended when I saw it. I was like, gee, I, he's saying I can't, yeah. my life, my moral is, decisions make it such that I'm unable to be happy in this life. Like, whoa, <laughs> Where, where's the argument for that? <laughs> like, what is it about deciding not to eat animal products makes me unable to be a happy person? In fact, our channel name's Happy Healthy Vegan. I'm much happier living a life now where I don't harm and exploit animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose and hey, do so on a daily yeah, yeah. basis. Let me it makes me question. happy. It brings me yeah, joy. Yeah. The only thing that pisses <laughs> me off is seeing misinformation about vegans. <laughs> good, good. Um, this is just an opinion and we're just finishing off on we're just talking right now i don't yeah we're just I, talking kevin yeah yeah I exactly i'm not okay but um let me ask you this do you do you do you ever cause anybody else any suffering in your life um yeah i just did yesterday on the basketball court hell yeah <laughs> they were complaining you, you, you beat the crowd you you beat them badly on the basketball court that's what yeah you yeah they're like okay. trash talking saying i was just like 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 just playing down low. I said after the game, I pointed, hey, dude, yeah, I did get a few buckets down low, but I hit mid range jump shots. I was killing you on the outside behind the arc, and they I just tried to, hey, they were pissed off at me. So said, don't call me Shaq. I was hitting, I was playing everywhere on the court. Very diverse, versatile game. So, yeah, that was yeah. causing some misery for these guys yesterday. Yeah, I won both my games of um, 21 and both my games of two on two. And I, I'm, I'm still feeling it today. I played way too long and too hard yesterday. So, so what? Perfect. So one of the things that I really love to do is I like jujitsu, and I'm not as good at jujitsu as you are. At I basketball. saw you challenge Sean Baker to jujitsu. Did he ever get back to you? <laughs> no. Or is it crickets? He's a coward. He's a freaking coward, man. He is so fake. He is like the fakest. He is the fakest of all of them. He is the most pretentious, fakest BSer who's who's not telling the truth about half the stuff he says, and he knows it of all of them. He's probably so full of resentment that he got his medical license taken away that he's just saying things that are false just because he's mad about it. Like he's a pretty, anyway, I could go on. I've, I've had run-ins with him too. I'm not gonna I even go there right. anymore. Uh, look, but but uh, anyway, let's get back to this though. Let's get back I, to this. I, I do, do, I do yeah, so I do cause, I do cause people to get upset with right. me for sure, yeah. Right. In fact, I and, probably made you a little upset making a video about you, you know? <laughs> like I, I, it was fun. I like, I like conflict sometimes. You know, I like to argue. Uh, it's fun. I find this, it's not comfortable. It's not completely comfortable, but it's been fun because we get to sort of cross sabers and some parts, I, I don't know, maybe I got the worst end of it than you did, but I still learn at the end. That's why I like it. It's a test and it shows you what you are at that particular thing, right? Okay, but when you're winning, it feels amazing. Right when you're when you're you're dominating other people, it feels amazing. Right, whenever I'm doing jujitsu, and I like get a choke on somebody, I take somebody's back, I get their neck, and I'm choking them. And there's something like, I love it. You know, I love it. Of course, you know, you tap out, they don't go unconscious, like it's safe. But I love it because it's um it's it's just fun. So why? So but how does this get back to me causing misery for people? No, I mean, it's, no, it's just it's a right. fact of life. I do cause some people to get bummed at me it's sometimes. Yeah, life. It's a fact of life that we enjoy, that humans enjoy, 
winning. And what does that mean? That means other people have to lose. The fact that like, let we sometimes uh, love dominating other people. Okay, so how does right? this apply to veganism? I see, I see where you're going with this, but I don't yeah, yeah. understand the connection to being yeah, yeah. a vegan. Well, so, so, so the the idea behind veganism again, I'm I don't, I'm not a philosopher. I may sound like a fucking moron to a lot of people <laughs> listening to this. It's fine because this is not my area. Nutrition science is my area, so. I'm not, so please don't judge my nutrition science based on this. You can probably think I'm BS because I cite Denise Minger. That's fine. Whatever. You can judge it on that basis. But, I didn't uh, see the comments. Did they? I don't know. Anyway, but anyway, let's get back terrible. to the veganism. How, how, if, destroyed, so. how is my, my motivation, which is laudable to not harm animals, make me not compatible to have happiness? So, so check it out. So, so check it out. What is the purpose behind veganism? Not to cause undue suffering for, for what? For your pleasure? Um, well, let me show you the definition of vegan right here. It's a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practical all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. Um, so yeah, that's my motivation for being vegan right there, not to harm... Because they feel, they feel pain? Like psych mental pain or what? Um, um, if I were to uh, uh, slit your um, throat, which I don't want to do, you would oh, feel pain. You wouldn't be like stoked on life. And it, it, we have every reason to believe animals, sentient beings like us with brains, central nervous systems, emotional life, would feel a similar kind of not f doing well, uh, horror. You know, I'm trying to downplay it a little bit. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. They would feel pain. They would feel suffering. Animals don't want to die so you can have a, a burger or whatever. They want to, like us, there's a drive to live. So yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh... So how is that incompatible with being a happy person, knowing that my decisions that I make in my everyday life, the, the kinds of like, you know, shoes I buy, the kinds of food I eat, the kind of shampoos I use don't involve harming animals. How does that make me not happy? How is that incompatible? <sighs> Since I value life of the animals who I don't believe should be exploited for our uses. You've got, you've got my uh, 2018 version of myself there so I don't, okay I don't... so have you moved on like i said it's fair we all evolve I, I, we learn just, more i was just trying to play devil's advocate i can't really figure out a way to defend what i said okay so. on it i, I pre appreciate the honesty yeah. kevin like i said if this is not you anymore no problem you know but i some actually i didn't find this actually one of uh, my followers on twitter sent this to me i tell you I'll, you rub some You're vegans the wrong way i guess they remembered this and they said hey let's show this one to ryan <laughs> There's other stuff that people do, like, ugh, whatever. Yeah, no, that's my 2018 version. So. I respect that. That's cool. All right, if you don't really believe that, because I have to say I'm, you know, a fairly happy person. I can't say I'm more or less happy than I was before. I'm just, you know, the same person I was as far as happiness. Maybe a little bit more happy in some senses, knowing that I'm not doing all the things I just talked about. But then it's tougher on the other side. On another hand, too, because, you know, there's so many people that hate me and other vegans just simply for the fact that we don't consume animal products. Nothing about me personally personally and then they'll make personal attacks i don't know what levels of hate you've gotten but there's channels that are devoted to making personal attacks on vegans this one channel makes attacks on me for like being losing my hair at, in my 50s this is half of the wet look going on right now for losing my eyebrows for all my muscles deteriorating away and whatever you know i mean that's the the, the part that's not as happy um i guess it has nothing to do with veganism it has to just do with being somewhat in the public eye but in general i think i'm probably a little bit happier now even despite the haters online yes yep the haters are terrible they uh even if you're not you're not losing your hair or like you're barely losing any hair or you look fine they'll still say that you're uh you look very unhealthy right everybody always says that to, but to me i look very unhealthy i'm like who are you comparing me to you know i go course, well yeah what objective measure i mean i have like eight years ten years of blood tests hell i put one back from 1999 to compare 1999 blood tests with vegan ones and they're i'll give you a hint they're better now i mean what objective measure are you judging me by you know they're, it's like they're judging you by like them hating you that's it. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. you can, can say. So in, yeah. that's the th sense, but that's not a vegan thing. That's just like yeah, yeah. just yeah. The, the path I've been on thing. People know who I am. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy as, as a vegan. I have, I have no regrets. In fact, the opposite. It's, it, besides um, marrying my wife, Angie, it's the best decision I've made in my life. 
Wait, besides marrying your wife, it's the best decision you made in your life? The, yeah, those are the two best decisions I made in life, oh, I think. Okay, okay. Yeah, besides, those are the number, <laughs> the top two. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, no, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll read the health, the uh, Adventist health study. I will. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the um, actual. We'll go back. I'll, I'll send you the link to the meta analysis and then from there you can just like dive in and find the uh, the, uh, the the three individual studies that um they're referring to but let me i'll send that to you let me copy that i'll send it to you right now on twitter um so you'll have that if you need any more info i'm sure you're good at researching you should be able to um all right so i sent that to your dm the cool. meta analysis yeah, and then I'll also make sure to uh, review Proteinholic so that whenever Garth blocks me after seeing this, uh, <laughs> I will uh, well, at least you know <laughs> more about this. Hopefully, well, hopefully I'll want to have a, a, an open discussion because I said from the outset, I'm not here to defend the science, even though I have some training in research and science. I feel that's not my area of expertise, you know, not a medical doctor, PhD or anything like that. So yeah, I think it would be a, a great discussion if you want to have a chat with him or, or Danielle. But particularly to Dr. Garth Davis now, since we refer to him so often here. No, I know a lot of people like him. He's very smart. He just shared one of my Instagram things. Apparently, he's on Team Science, so it's great. Yeah, I saw. I'm so I'm sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> I need to reread. Uh, I need to reread his book so that I know exactly. I, we can talk in great detail about it, and I don't have to just necessarily cite Denise Minger. So. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. good. Now people are comparing me to Saladino. That's that's good. No, he no. Trust me, uh, you know, Kevin is nothing, nothing at all like Paul Saladino. Okay, let's not even go there, guys. No, no slandering here. Trust me, they're, they're I'm, I'm universes of universes I'm not apart. Read the I'm not gonna read the comments. They'll they'll be a little bit more biased towards you know of happy course. healthy vegans. So don't worry about that. It's just a fact <laughs> of of you know the situation. But yeah, I wouldn't read anything to it too personally or anything like that. You you did fine. You you held your your points of view. You know, you defended them. Some better than others, maybe I don't know. But every, everyone could decide for his his or herself. You know how how um they feel about um the points discussed here. But I'm glad you backed off on the 2018 position there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'll read that stuff and and uh, we'll stay in touch. I guess I can. Uh, I'll tell you whether I think you're right or wrong, and uh, I'll tell you why. So okay. So, all right. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, very few people who have made open invitations to come on and, and, and discuss their what I thought were anti-vegan points of view have actually taken me up on it. So I appreciate you for for um, for doing this. You know, have, I think it was a really interesting discussion. I, I learned a lot, and um, you know, um, you know, I think it's bad for anyone to think they know everything. So it's all, I always feel good when I challenge myself and hear opposing points of view, and you did just that. So I appreciate that. I thank you, Kevin. Thank you too. Um, I've learned a few things as well, and uh, and I am passionate. I'm sorry. I said I was going to keep this really anti-aggressive. I tried my best. Hopefully, no, you, you guys thought I was. But I'm very passionate about what I do. Uh, just you know, it's just who I am. You know, I'm a very passionate vegan. That's why yeah, I've been doing I, this since 2013 on online. <laughs> I've learned a lot um, from from preparing for this, and uh, I'm going to continue learning and. That's why I came on. I came on so that this would be a learning process, and I would grow as a, you know, as a scientist and as a as a communicator of the science. And if I offended people who are evidence based, that consider themselves evidence based and vegan, uh, that was never my intention. Uh, we're all on the same side, people who are evidence based, and so um, I hope that uh, that people can interpret and understand that as me trying to. Um, simply go after people who are providing misinformation and not all vegans. I am, a, I am a friend of vegans. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a you know, I am well, a, uh, I'm a plant predominant cousin. So, so I would say keep that in mind in future posts when you talk about yeah, vegans. Yeah. Like, hmm, am I just talking about the wacky zany vegans, or am I going to offend all vegans in, included in this yeah. statement? Just ponder that because we're not all like that. You know, it's the, yeah. maybe that's the group you kind of have in mind, but the people I surround myself with, yeah, we're we're, we're very evidence based. Yeah. So, so this whole process was interesting, and it will continue to. Um, especially as it ferments, it'll continue to inform what I'm doing in the future. So I thank you very much for this opportunity. It was a good discussion. It was better than 
I thought it was going to be. Actually, it was in some ways in line, in some ways not in line when I thought it was going to be. And I think this was this struck a really good balance. So, um, uh, yeah. So thanks for having me on. All right, Kevin. All right, I'll see you on Twitter. And um, yeah, let me know what you thought about any.